It's no secret that the official KDE release of Ubuntu isn't all that flash. It comes with a pretty stock standard KDE desktop and a handful of relatively KDE centric apps that make for a desktop that's not bad by any stretch, but it just seems to be a little bland and a little lacking in that ever elusive category, being user friendliness. Well that's where distributions like Linux Mint KDE and Netrunner come in. Both of these distributions are based off Ubuntu's LTS release 14.04 and both use KDE software compilation 4.13 as a base for their desktop experience. They're both high quality desktops and, uh, and they're perfect for new users, especially users that are accustomed to that Windows 7 style of getting things done. So today we're going to delve into both and have a look to see which one comes out on top. It's a very tough competition. But with the myriad of Ubuntu based KDE distros out there, it's time to find out which one is the best, Linux Mint 17 Kiana or Netrunner OS Frontier in five main categories, core system, design, performance, software management and unique features. So at their core, both distributions have the same innards. They're both children of the same parents, so both distros have a Linux kernel 3.13 and an Ubuntu 14.04 package base, with KDE 4.13 running the show on the surface. Both will receive security updates until 2019, and both have very good hardware support with automatic driver detection and installation. So no matter which OS comes out on top, at their core they're both very similar beasts. However, Linux Mint will receive more attention long term, as the LTS base is going to provide the framework for every distribution that Linux Mint makes for the next two years. So Linux Mint gets the edge here, as it's going to be a better supported operating system moving forward. Now when it comes to design, we come across a difficult minefield to navigate. Every OS needs to be designed simply enough that the new user can pick it up and use it but with enough customization and tools that power users aren't ignored. So let's take a look at Mint. The default design of Linux Mint KDE is fairly minimalist. There's not too many elements that look out of the ordinary compared to a typical Windows 7 desktop, and a traditional desktop paradigm is in play here with quick launch shortcuts to the file manager and a show desktop button. The menu and fonts clearly present the software that is pre-installed and it doesn't take too much effort at all to right click the desktop and customize both you know, the wallpaper and desktop widgets in almost the exact same way you would on a Windows 7 desktop. And adding desktop shortcuts is a simple drag and drop affair and the window controls, file menus, system tray are right where they should be. While a little more creativity could lift the Mint KDE desktop beyond its rather spartan looks, there's no doubt about it, Linux Mint KDE is one of the closest desktops you're ever going to get to Windows 7. It's incredibly user friendly. Now, Netrunner, on the other hand, takes a few more risks. While it's fundamentally the same, Netrunner opts for a few more tools in the system tray and a much more simple start menu, along with some shortcuts on the desktop to your computer and network connections. Once you open a file manager window, you start to notice the real differences between the two. Uh, everything is larger, the fonts are easier to read, the icons really pop, and the controls are easily visible and clickable. And while it's difficult to judge a distribution based on its looks, the average consumer is going to be more concerned with how the design works, often at the expense of how it looks. I mean, just take Windows XP for example. So while the extra theming is nice on Netrunner, I'm more interested in what functional differences design choices have made in a distribution's usability. And in that vein, Netrunner comes with a much more user-friendly control panel, taking the usual KDE settings mess and condensing it into a much more easily accessible and understandable settings control. My only real gripe with the design is the menu choice. While it is simpler, it doesn't explain what each program does, like its Linux Mint counterpart, which could easily confuse a new user on first install. Overall though, the decision to make things larger, brighter, with more contrast and less confusing options gives Netrunner the winning edge in terms of design. So what about performance? Well this one's a little easier to judge. At a cold boot, Linux Mint is consistently faster than Netrunner in getting to the desktop. It also consistently uses 200 meg of RAM less than Netrunner to accomplish the same tasks. And the time it takes for software to launch is about even, but Linux Mint consistently seems to have the upper edge in terms of responsiveness. 
so the performance trophy definitely belongs to Mint 17. Now software and software management is another area of vast difference between these two desktops. Linux Mint has its own tools to manage software updates and adding and removing software from the system, and Netrunner uses the standard KDE tools, both of which have come a long way uh, in the last few years. Linux Mint's software and update management tools have been around for some time now, and there's a reason for that. Their update manager is simply the best manager in existence. And while their software manager isn't the prettiest, it's functional and it provides an easy way to install popular and recognizable software such as Picasa, Skype, Opera, and so on. The Muon Discover software manager and update manager, they do have potential, but they just can't match Linux Mint in terms of functionality and user friendliness. But when it comes to the software that is pre-installed on these two systems, I much prefer the choices that Netrunner have made, as their software choices are not only better than Mint in most regards, but their software selection is far more complete. Uh, it could because it's got video editing software, vector graphics editing, uh, tweaked out web browsers, and the Steam games launcher as well. It is a tough decision, but I think Linux Mint gets the edge here, as managing updates and software is much more important long term than what comes pre-installed. So now it's time for the decider, unique features. This is by far the most difficult category to judge because both Linux Mint and Netrunner have some pretty unique features that aid in making the distribution as user-friendly as possible. So let's start with Linux Mint. Due to Linux Mint's strong heritage over the last five years or more, the Mint team have gradually been increasing their own arsenal of Mint-specific tools, including a backup tool that backs up both user data and software choice, a domain blocker, an upload manager, uh, and USB stick writers and formatters. Netrunner, on the other hand, goes for the jugular. Netrunner has links to popular cloud services uh, built into its keyboard application launcher. It has a perfect integration with Google and Facebook accounts to tie in with your photo managing apps and chat accounts, etc. Um, while at the same time, it does actually borrow a handful of tools from the Linux Mint camp. So at the end of the day, I feel that Netrunner has put more of a focus on adding features uh, that will benefit the average user than Linux Mint has. So Netrunner wins out on this category as well. So in the end, it looks like Linux Mint 17 Kiana KDE pulls ahead in the final tally, 3-2 over Netrunner OS Frontier. And while I personally prefer Netrunner because of its design and features, the quality and infrastructure of Linux Mint is much better established and provides a familiar and easily maintainable operating system long term. Its stability and user friendliness is undeniable, though Netrunner provides some tough competition and will probably end up being my next primary distribution. So let me know what you think about these two distributions in the comments below. Leave your vote down there and you could well be influencing what I run as my next primary operating system on my machine. So thank you all for watching, give the video a thumbs up if it helped you out and consider subscribing if you like this content on a regular basis. I will see you all in the very near future, until then, my name is IG and I shall catch you later. Peace out ladies and gentlemen.